The Shakespeare and Autism Project at Ohio State is a collaboration between the Department of Theater and the Nysonger Center, which studies developmental disabilities. Art and science coming together to see just how effective Shakespeare games can be in helping children with autism. And it all starts with a heartbeat. A group of children with autism and a group of actors sit around in a circle and we make a heartbeat together. Now when we do actual performances of The Tempest with the children, the audience joins in the heartbeat. So let's give it a shot. Then we'll add a hello. Hello, 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 hello. Go ahead. Hello, 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 hello. And then we'll rest our hands. Give ourselves a little round of applause. Yeah. So right about now, I'm sure some of you are wondering, uh, all right there, slightly younger Kevin Bacon. <laughs> What's up with the heartbeat? Well, the heartbeat is arguably the first sound we experience before we're even born, right? Our mother's heartbeat. So it's organically sort of nurturing and familiar. And the children are able to really connect with that very successfully and very quickly. It also happens to be the rhythm of Shakespeare's language. Iambic pentameter, yeah? Ba-boom, 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 ba-boom. But soft. What light through yonder window breaks? Or through the tempest? Oh, brave new world that has such people in it. Now using that rhythm of language, and incredibly vivid characters and storytelling. Shakespeare, maybe better than anyone else, has expressed what it feels like to be fully alive. And that full expression, that putting words to feelings and, and getting it out, is what so many children with autism crave, but they find extremely challenging. So this heartbeat becomes the place where the students, the children, and the actors can come together to meet, to play. And that's what we do. We play sensory drama games based on Shakespeare. And these games were created by Kelly Hunter, an amazing British actress and director who brought this work to OSU in 2011 as part of our partnership with the Royal Shakespeare Company. Her approach is called the Hunter Heartbeat Method. And she takes Shakespeare's rhythm of language, and then she's constructed these games to focus on the themes of the eyes, the mind, and the heart, all in service of finding those moments of full, clear expression. Now these games are, they're just, they're simple in their nature, but what we do is we're able to challenge the child's autism through play, right? And above all, the kids have fun. They are having fun. They're exploring imitation, improvisation, language, different physicalities, characters, humor. But embedded in each of these games is a challenge to their autism. Through play, we are asking them to do something difficult, maintain eye contact, develop spatial awareness, recognize and then replicate facial expressions that are connected to specific emotions, take turns, have social give and take, be part of an ensemble. Now, I got involved in this work in 2012 as a grad student as part of a team of actors led by Robin Post, who was the original director of the Shakespeare and Autism Project, and on the heels of an 11-week pilot project, we spent two years 
playing these games weekly with two different groups of kids from Columbus schools. And the Nysonger Center, the science part of it, led by the director Mark Tasse and PhD student Maggie Melling, they tested the children all throughout the process. They came up with the research, the data. Now the initial feedback from parents and teachers and from the actors ourselves was that the Hunter Heartbeat Method was having this amazing effect on the children. The anecdotes were coming from all over the place. I've never seen my child behave this way. I didn't know they had that side to their personality. My daughter's never sat and focused for that long. And now she's trying harder to make friends at school. I've never seen my son speak this clearly in public. And it was tremendous. But there was the science as well, right? What did the science say? The Nysonger's initial research revealed that the children were making statistically significant progress in recognizing facial emotions. I totally just said that like a non-scientist, <laughs> like an actor. They also were making statistically significant progress in their social use of language and social relationship skills. Right? It was working. This thing we were doing was working. Art and science supporting each other. And the Nysonger's next phase of research is this incredible thing where they have this imaging where they can take pictures of that part of your brain that recognizes faces and see if the Hunter Heartbeat Method spikes the activity in that part of the brain. Sort of like, this is your brain on Shakespeare and fun. <laughs> and we are really eager to see what the results of that are. Brilliant ideas. Now when you submit a TED Talk proposal, your urge to explain, you know, why is your idea worth spreading? Well, none of this is my idea. It's Kelly Hunter's idea. It's Maggie Melling's idea. Mark Tasse's idea. My big idea was saying yes to people smarter than me. That, that was my big idea. Kelly asked me to join her in 2012. And later on, she revealed to me that she was convinced that I would say no. That somehow, from her point of view, I was busy doing other things. That I was pursuing my acting career, doing my thing. I was beyond this. But what Kelly didn't understand, and what the truth of it was, was I'd become that guy that actor, sitting around waiting for the phone to ring in the hopes of maybe getting an audition for FBI agent number two on the next episode of Criminal Minds. <laughs> Which I'm totally available for, by the way, in case uh, <laughs> the casting director is here or tuning in, why wouldn't they? Right? But I had to decide which kind of actor I wanted to be. Or why am I still acting? Why is this the thing that I am devoting, devoting my entire adult life to? What kind of artist do I want to be? What kind of person do I want to be? And the answer was in saying yes to people smarter than me. My wife, Lisa, urged me to go to grad school, 2009. I said no. She urged me again. I said yes. And it was there, the first time in 20-some years as an actor, for the first time I performed Shakespeare. 2010, first time I ever did Shakespeare. And I met Kelly Hunter, and I arrived on the precipice of this work, and I was terrified. I didn't know if I had the goods. I wasn't a Shakespeare expert. I certainly wasn't an autism expert. Was I able to go in and help these children? Did I have the goods? Did I have the right? And then I walked in to the first workshop. And I sat in a circle, and I made the heartbeat with the children for the first time. And something released. And by the end of that first workshop, I remembered why I loved acting, why I love actors, why I love theater, and why I love the arts. Children 
were changing right in front of my eyes. They were transforming. I was moved. My fellow actors were moved. The teaching aides were moved. The bus driver taking the kids home, he was moved. And the kids were having a blast. I'll put it to you this way, since this is our moment, right? This is our moment. March 25th, 2017, and we again find ourselves on the precipice of having to fight for the arts in our country, having to fight to prove that the arts are vital to our nation's health, identity, spirit, soul. It's okay, we've been there before, we'll be there again. But maybe if we, in this moment, can all agree that the benchmark of art, the standard, and that from which it derives its power, the benchmark is that we all leave better for having the experience than when we arrived. Better for being there. If we can all agree that that's the standard, the benchmark, then Shakespeare and autism is easily the most pure form of art that I have ever come across. Because every time, everyone leaves better than when they arrived. Every time. And as an actor, what a gift for me to relearn two things that I'd forgotten as an actor. I knew him as a parent. I, for some reason, forgot him as an actor. The first one was that I had to choose to care about something outside of myself. And if any of you have an actor in the family, <laughs> good luck with that. I had to choose to care about that. And second, I had to show up. I mean show up, ready to give the best of myself to someone else all the time. Choose to care and show up. So many people have shown up in the six years we've been doing this. I wish I could name them all, but the organizers would probably just start to stroke out if I named them all. For all this, success that we've had, there was one thing that was nagging at us that didn't, that didn't compute, that we didn't have the answer to, there was no research for it. And that was, did this last? Was there a lasting effect on the children, this work? Because at the end of those two years, that last workshop, we did it, and then it was over. Right? And we needy emotional actors, we needed closure. The children just needed to catch their bus or go to class. And we were left with, you know, are they going to remember this? What was it that we just did? To what end? And then eight months later, I was at the playground with my son, Cav. He was four. And there was an after-school occupational therapy group there as well, and I recognized one of the boys from the Shakespeare workshops. I was like, oh. Here's my chance. I can maybe get the answer to this. I said, Cap, let's go over and, and we'll meet somebody. And I was nervous all over again. And I go, hey, man, do you remember me? And he looks at me and he goes, uh, Shakespeare. We played Shakespeare. Hello. 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 And Cav, my son, says, Dad, what's wrong? And I was like, nothing's wrong, man. <laughs> nothing's, nothing's wrong at all. I was a mess. I was a total mess. So I like, pulled myself together. And Cav and I go to play tag. But uh, this boy, he sort of drifts over. He's interested in us, right, because I've gone over. And every time Cav and I would zoom past him, he would do another line and gesture from the games we played. Zoom, hell is empty and all the devils are here. <laughs> Zoom, salt water, shall you drink? Zoom, oh, you wonder, I love you. And then Kevin and I had to leave. And as we were walking away, I was like, hey, man, see you later. Good to see you again. 
and I was texting as fast as I could. Sparks were flying off the keypad of my phone, texting everybody involved in Shakespeare and autism. It works. He remembered. He remembered. And I turned around, and I said, see ya. And he was on top of the slide at the apex of the playground. And there was this burnt orange sunset behind him. It was epic. <laughs> Terrence Malick couldn't have done any better. <laughs> and he responded in the way that we close every workshop and every performance of The Tempest. Goodbye. 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 And I took my son's hand, and I walked home. Thank you.